All right, hello, my fellow coder. Welcome uh, to this series where I'm going to be diving into uh, the ins and outs of uh, Java programming with respect to starting a career as a Java programmer. So how to get a job, uh, the, the yeses and the noes and the, the tips and the tricks when it comes down to it. So in this particular video, I want to talk about uh, the specifics around the interview process sort of before we get to the interview itself. So uh, tips and tricks around how to essentially land your very first interview or maybe your 10th interview when it comes to uh, getting a job as a coder. Now, one very common mistake that I see uh, when it comes to the students that I train uh, on you know, the Java programming language and full stack Java and really any programming language at all is they often try to seek certifications. They put a lot of weight and effort in certifications, particularly those that did not pursue a post-secondary education. Perhaps they didn't go to university or college or whatever uh, and got a degree or a diploma in the uh, field of programming in general. So they try to make up for that by adding a bunch of certifications to their resume. I can totally see why you would want to do that. But I've actually interviewed HR professionals, hiring managers, recruiters uh, on this specific topic. And to my utter surprise, I'm not even kidding about this. I was really surprised by this. That's actually a negative uh, when they see that on your resume. If they see a bunch of certifications, uh, they actually see that as a negative, meaning that you place more um, effort into trying to get a certification and less effort on real world stuff. Because let's face it, certifications and exams are, don't really necessarily reflect real world scenarios. Uh, so that's why they really don't place a lot of merit to a certification. Does it mean that having one certification is gonna hurt you? I don't think so. It doesn't hurt to have one certification, just don't try to have a whole bunch. Now this leads me to my second point, which is instead of leaning on certifications, build projects, okay? Have a GitHub repository or a Bitbucket repository, whatever repo that you wanna use, have a repository of projects that you personally have built from scratch and hopefully these apps that you build are real world, okay? They don't have to be real world, but at least they have to apply to the field that you're trying to get into, okay? So if you're trying to be a game programmer, you know, you probably don't wanna build web apps, you probably wanna build games and put them in their, your portfolio, and vice versa. If you're trying to be a, an enterprise web application developer, which is the stuff that I focus on, you know, doing game programming is probably not gonna help your case out. Okay, but what you want to show here is you want to show that you are a self-starter, you're able to get projects done on your own, and it also shows that you have a passion for programming, because if you're willing to do this in your spare time, you must like the stuff. Okay, so that's what uh, HR professionals, recruiters, uh, and, and hiring managers, that's what they want to see on your resume if you don't have any real world experience, okay? So if you don't have any real world experience, I highly, highly recommend projects, projects, projects. Get them in there, get them on your GitHub repository and put that on your resume. So this leads me to a third point, which is unfortunately, the way the world works is most of the jobs are in the big cities. So if you live, you know, seven hours away from the nearest big city, the chances of you landing a job are going to be very difficult. I know I was in this position myself, so I had to move closer to a big city. Now, that's not to say that there aren't any remote opportunities out there where you can work as a remote employee and maybe go into the office only once every other week or once a month or once every six months, what have you. Uh, those jobs exist, but they are very, very much, um, they're the rarity, they're, they're the rare, the exception to the rule at the moment. Definitely organizations are going more towards uh, remote work environments, but we're not there yet where that's the majority, okay? That's definitely the minority uh, currently in 2019. So that's just the way the cookie crumbles with that one. So if you don't live near a big city, I'm sorry, you're probably gonna have to consider going to live, and, you know, uproot your entire life. I know it's difficult, um, but it's the reality of the situation when it comes to programming. The other option is you can be a freelancer, okay? Freelancers generally aren't required to be in an office. Okay, so you can go to a website like upwork.com and you can sign up to be a programmer there and you can offer your services as a freelancer. But again, potential clients, uh, freelance clients are going to want to see examples of other work that you have done. So that goes back to my second point, projects, projects, projects. Okay, point number four is around 
uh, working smart when it comes to applying for jobs. When I first got out of, out of university and I tried to get uh, a job, my first job, I uh, tried to apply to, I think it was like 10 a day or something. I would apply to, uh, you know, go through, at the, at the time that I graduated, I think it was like, what was it, Workopolis or Monster.com or something like that was the job website that I used. Uh, you know, these days it's more like Indeed or something like that. But, um, you know, I would apply to 10 a day, 20 a day, uh, you know, going just for, for straight volume of firing my resume out everywhere and praying. It's the spraying and praying method, if you're familiar with that. Uh, that's not working smart, okay? So the smarter way to work is to use recruiters, okay? Headhunters. Find recruiters or headhunters on LinkedIn. Make sure that you have a good LinkedIn profile. Um, you know, highlight as much as you can about yourself in your own uh, LinkedIn profile. Put those projects from point number two into your LinkedIn profile uh, and then try to reach out to headhunters in your area and say, hey, you know, I am a you know, Java programmer, I'm a PHP programmer, I'm a Python programmer, whatever the case may be. Let them know what your skill set is and say what it is that you're looking for. Okay, I'm looking for full stack web application uh, opportunities. I'm looking for back end, I'm looking for front end, I'm looking to be a database administrator, whatever the case may be. Um, reach out to, instead of individual jobs, reach out to individual recruiters because that is a one to many potential relationship that you're building because those recruiters now are incentivized to find you a job and they're going to go and they're going to do the spray and pray for you on your behalf. Okay. My first job, uh, I essentially got through a recruiter. Okay. That is, well, actually that's, that's not entirely true. The person found me on a job website and reached out to me. My second job I got because of a, of a recruiter. So in both instances, all of my individual applications that I sent out on the job sites, none of them, not a single one led to a single interview, okay? The only interviews that I got were from people who organically found me on these websites, so make sure your resume is publicly available somewhere and everywhere, and uh, the other one was through a recruiter, okay? So none of my hard effort with, you know, the, uh, the process of spraying and praying never worked out for me at any point in my career. So highly recommend going for recruiters. Now this leads me to my fifth and final point here, uh, and this is a little bit of a trick that some of you might not love, it might not be a very popular opinion, but this is kind of the real world. Getting an entry level position in almost any field outside of even programming is pretty tough because most employers want to see that you already have that experience. So again, go back to point number two, projects, 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 have those in your, um, or on your resume and in your GitHub profiles, that's definitely going to help. but. In the, the situation where you just can't find any jobs, you're just not getting any callbacks, here's what I would recommend. Try to get into a company that does the development in the language that you want to do it in. So for example, if you're a Java programmer or aspiring Java programmer, find a company that does have a Java programming department, but apply to a QA position in that company or apply to a position that um, you know, still interests you and still has some sort of correlation with the programming world, the world of tech, the world of IT, but not necessarily as a programmer, okay? So actually my first job wasn't being a Java programmer, my first job was a forms analyst. And what that meant was I worked for an insurance company where I helped them put together the insurance documents that got mailed out to their clients. And there was only a tiny fraction of my job that required me to know anything about programming. I'm saying 3%, 5% of the job was programming. 95% of the job was using some proprietary software that they used to you know, mix and match forms together. It was very boring. It was arduous. It was not inspiring work, but they had a Java programming department in that same company and within one year of showing them that I was a good employee, I did good work and I said that I was interested in being a Java programmer and I kept saying I would love to move to the Java development team, that's where my passion was and I think I'd be a great employee as a Java programmer. Within a year I was moved to that team and that's where my career has been ever since. So there is something to be said about paying your dues when it comes to getting a job that might not directly be programming related uh, at first, but it's going to get you your foot in the door uh, in a company that hopefully, like I said, you already know has some sort of a programming department that you can then move into. Okay, so this is a great way to get an entry level position uh, a lot more reliably. 
Okay, so there's a lot there's a lot less skills required to be a QA person. No offense to any QA people that might be looking or watching this video. Um, there's a, a certain set of skills that doesn't require necessarily a programming skill set to be a QA person, and you don't necessarily need a university degree to be a QA person. You just need to have a mind of a tester, which if you're a programmer, you're going to have that anyway. So those two correlate very well. That's a very common career trajectory that I see is you start out as a QA person and then move into becoming a programmer or even uh, an automated tester. So someone who writes code to create test cases that run automatically. Also a very lucrative and potentially re rewarding career if you like that kind of thing. So uh, now all these five points are to say getting your first job is tough and you know, getting the help you need to get that first job is obviously going to be very beneficial. And why am I saying that? Well, I've got a new boot camp that I'm teasing in this video. Uh, it's coming soon. I'm not releasing the exact date just yet because I'm still working out the details. But essentially this boot camp is going to be around the Java programming language and teaching you everything you need to know to get a job in the field of Java programming. And I'm actually going so far as to say that for this first run, I'm going to guarantee that every single person in this boot camp is going to get a job at, at the end of this boot camp. Okay, and what I'm doing is if you do not get a job by the end of the boot camp, I'm going to put you through the boot camp again, and I'm going to keep on trying to find you the job. I'm going to keep on uh, networking for you and doing everything I can to get you that job. That is my guarantee that I'm doing in this boot camp. So if that's exciting to you and that's exactly what you want, then pay attention to these YouTubes and podcast series that I'm putting out here because more information is coming about this boot camp. I'm very excited. Hopefully you are too, and I can't wait to see you on the inside. So until next time, happy learning, take care of yourself, and bye for now.